the bell song? No, it's Rodell's song. And row, row after midnight tram. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Ram Roro After Midnight. Thank you for joining us. Before I start, I'd like to remind everyone that this is a nightly live stream via Facebook. Just look for Roro the Tenor or YouTube. Subscribe to Filipino Tenor. Um, this is every day, every night, Monday to Saturday at 12.01 a.m. Chicago. 101 a.m. New York City and 1001 p.m. Pacific, which is in Los Angeles. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Roro the Tenor. And you can send me 50 cents on Venmo. Okay. So anyway, so let me put my banners together because, you know, this is a one-man show, one-person show. There it is. And there it is again. There you go. Now we go to our <clears throat> joke of the day. What is our joke of the day? How do lumberjacks work from home? They log in. <laughs> and now for our pickup line of the day. Our pickup line of the day is, if I had a nickel for every time I saw someone as beautiful as you, I'd still only have five cents. Oh. Anyway, that was so beautiful. Again, I'd like to remind everyone, the joke and pickup line of the day, generously donated by my husband, Stephen Hunter. You can follow me on Instagram at Steverino Hunter. And before we continue, in case you're watching outside, you know, it's like 32 degrees outside, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and use a hand sanitizer, not a ham sanitizer. A ham sanitizer is what you use during Christmas, okay? A hand sanitizer, okay. So, now, ooh, we got some nice, nice show right now. My show right now is consists of two very special people. I have, they, those, these are very good friends of mine. Um, they're both wives of very uh, accomplished international artists, uh, Samuel Ramey and Lucas Meacham. And now I'd like to give to you our guest tonight is, oh my God, it's taking forever for me to do this. Stop it. No, no. <laughs> I'd like to present to you my guest tonight, Ms. Lindsay Ramey and Ms. Irina Meacham. And now here they are. And there they are. Just a second, don't say hi yet. And now you can say hi. Hello. <laughs> hi. <laughs> no, it's like, wait, wait a second. It's like, when people read it, it'd be like, oh, which one's Irina and which one's <laughs> Lindsay? It's like, I, I push the buttons differently right now. Please forgive me. So there you go. To the center right now is Irina, and to my left <laughs> is Lindsay. Say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Yes, yes. So, so Irina, um, where are you? Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it is not freezing here, and there is no snow on the ground, so no snow jokes. Surprising. True. <laughs> and Lindsay, where are you? Wichita, Kansas. And there is no snow on the ground. Yes. Oh, good, 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 good. So that's good. So, um, but we had seven earthquakes today. Seven, seven in Wichita, Kansas. What? Yeah. I mean, what what are the what 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 are the uh, magnitudes? Do you know? The uh, largest magnitude was three point seven. Oh, still, you could feel that. We could. You felt them. We. Oh, yes. How's the weather there, Irina? <laughs> I mean, is, is it just cold or just, you know? It's cold, but there's no overcast. So we have no rain and everything. It's it's a brown Christmas. Oh, oh. what does that mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. Not really. Everything's good. dead. <laughs> everything's dead. <laughs> everything's, everything's dead. <laughs> no, everything's brown. There's no. Oh, Clark says, hey, all. So Clark says that. And then we'll, we'll 
Thomas. <gasps> Thomas said, Patrick. Yay. Yes, people. Yes. So going to our to our show now. So I'm well, I changed the uh the 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 captions here. So now I'll now we're gonna talk about background music. No one's gonna sing, okay? Background music means um each of our guests are gonna talk about a little bit about themselves and how they're associated with music. And so, of course, we're now going to start with uh, with uh, Irina. Oh, there it, there it is. Hi. Well, my name is Irina Meacham. This is where I tell <laughs> you about myself, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could talk about anything. I could talk to a wall. Um, so I am a pianist. I studied to be a collaborative pianist and there were no jobs when I left my master's and I really liked working with opera singers and I just started getting job after job and quickly it became my higher calling in life. I loved learning about languages, being in a theater, being around singers and uh, so many different types of musicians being in an orchestra pit. It was an exhilarating experience. And I met Lucas while I was working and we fell in love. And now I travel with him and with our son. And it's so, it's so amazing. It was not what I thought it would be in the best way possible. It, it's been a wonderful ride. And I love having somebody like him by my side. And that, so I have a question, uh, at least for, so, oh my God, every time I go to it, it's like, oh my God, I can't even see myself. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, tell us about like, you know, uh, your, your, your background, I, I, you know, what, what your descent or like your first generation, what? So at least people know. We'll go way back and I'll tell you about my family and how my parents are both from Romania um, and they came over during communism. And my father was a, a political refugee because he, he escaped um, in the middle of the night. Um, my mother was pregnant with my older sister and he crossed the Danube and he was, um, he crossed on a plastic inflatable raft and it sank halfway through because the communist police had shot it down. <laughs> And he made it to the other side and he was in Yugoslavia in prison for many months. And then he was sponsored by an American family with the last name of Erickson. And I proudly bore that name um, for many, many years. And my, uh, my family is, um, is very connected to Romania still. And I went back to school there actually for high school. I went to a music school in Bucharest. And I speak Romanian, and Romanian is a big part of my upbringing. That's awesome. Now, now we go to <clears throat> now we go to Lindsay. Lindsay, tell us about. By the way, and also tell me about you know when you when you gave me the the background about your your grandfathers and all that because that's a great story as well. So tell us about you. Where you're from? Where you're born and raised? How many siblings and such? Oh, I am uh, from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I have four siblings. Oh, no, I don't, including me. I have three siblings, <laughs> <laughs> um, two sisters and a brother. I'm the second oldest. Um, both of my grandmothers were Norwegian descent and both of my grandfathers were Danish descent. So I'm I'm mixed race, <laughs> Norwegian and Danish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me see. Oh, my um, my maternal grandfather only spoke Danish until he started going to school. Um, and so he used to get beaten up a lot at school because uh, he was he didn't speak English. And they started calling him the Black Dane because he ended up with black eyes all the time from getting in fights. But he um, he turned out to be a very impressive man. He uh, was a really good businessman and he went to dental school and was an excellent dentist and um, he was wonderful. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm from. I'm from the Midwest. 
Awesome, awesome. Now we go to the section called, I call this, premarital section, okay? It means things that happened in their lives before they got married. I mean, we did know that, you know, <clears throat> Irina already told us about how it was, but we want to tell us about, and then to, for both of you, and I'm going to keep both of you here too. So tell us about, you know, uh, before you guys met, so you were in school, you're already collaborating with some singers. You know, how was that? How was your life? You know, how was the 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 momentum of your life before you met Lucas and later on with, with Lindsay before you met Sam? So, Well, when I was uh, starting out the young artist circuit, I was very set on having my career follow a certain path. And that was what everybody had told me. So I was very focused on completing all of the young arts programs and becoming a staff pianist. And that included a lot of traveling, a lot of auditioning, a lot of putting myself out there, constantly hustling. And my life was like a roller coaster and I loved it. So when I met Lucas, his life is also like a roller coaster, but he knows four or five years ahead of time. So I just felt like we got on the same ride together. What about you, Lindsay? <clears throat> I went to school. I um, All my degrees are in uh, vocal performance. I started out at St. Olaf College in Minnesota. And um, yeah, and uh, I got my bachelor of music degree. And it was actually at St. Olaf that I decided to do classical music. I originally thought, you know, maybe music theater, but then I realized that things were changing and they were really going for dancers more than singers at that point. So. <laughs> So I switched <laughs> and um, then I went to Northwestern University for my master's and um, started auditioning while I was living in Chicago. And then I uh, continued to get my certificate degree at DePaul University. And um, I got a lot of stage experience there. Um, Harry Silverstein is the director of opera there. And so it was great working with him. Um, and so I was mostly singing around Chicago. Um, and then I got a job singing in the chorus at Lyric Opera. And I was still auditioning and everything. And uh, the first opera I was in, Sam, was Boris Gudunov. <laughs> wow. I know. Oh, and, Pressure. I didn't, know, I didn't know him. I was just like, oh my gosh, that movie. Um, and then uh, over the course of about four years, with him coming back every year to do things, um, we got to know each other because Sam's really, um, he, he's he's just so down to earth and he's so friendly with everyone. And so he knew, you know, he talked to the chorus, he talked to the stagehands, he talked to everybody. And so over a period of years, we sort of got to know each other. That's awesome. Now, <clears throat> now here's uh, the, my one of my the main question for both of you. During that, now this is before you guys, you know, before during when when you were playing arena, when you were playing for you know doing your your collaboration, and also when you when Lindsay was in the chorus or singing in other places. What was your most embarrassing experience? This is before you met. Sam and, you know, and Lucas, what was your, like, let's start now with Lindsay. What was, what do you think was your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> Be, before Sam and I met? Before Sam. So that um, we know, yeah, well, before, you, before Sam, like, you know, th things that, you know, maybe in school or during performance in an opera. Or, or auditions. Or, exactly. <laughs> well, auditions are the worst. I mean, some people are great at auditions. I cannot show what I can do in five minutes. And, you know, I'm just not one of those people. But uh, so I am a very nervous auditioner. And a good friend of mine and I were waiting to audition for, I don't even remember what it was for. But um, I realized that the hem of my dress was hanging, the, you know, part of it had come out. And I just was panicking because you know, of course they wouldn't hire me if my hem was hanging. <laughs> so I, the only thing I had in my bag was a paper clip. And so I paper clipped my hem and managed to sort of hide it and went in and oh. did the audition. And I wiped that memory from my mind. It was very traumatic, but my a friend that was with me reminded me of that the other day. So I 
I, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like that, that, oh my God. What about you, Irina? But you can think of it's like maybe in the middle of performance, yeah. suddenly like you you farted. <laughs> I don't know. Those okay, those piano benches are I not comfortable. <laughs> I know, like I was such a geek about opera that mm -hmm. if I would say something that wasn't exactly oh. as it was written in the score, or I made some kind of professional mistake, that's when I would get really embarrassed because I was so green and fresh and I was still figuring coaching out an opera out. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I remember I was playing a bohème rehearsal and I played a rhythm wrong in the uh, uh, fourth act. Um, uh -huh. It's a really, really, really tricky passage and I didn't play a rhythm correctly. And the conductor like made a point to stop the whole rehearsal and coach me on it in front of everybody. The thing is I played the whole opera without a mistake with like that one measure. And so that, that well, yeah, that to me. and I never play that wrong today. <laughs> no. It works, whatever you did. <laughs> so I uh, now, and I won't be embarrassed by that. Now, so. now this is, now this is another one. I don't know if it's the same thing with embarrassing, but what was your most memorable experience on a positive note of like, this is like, I want to ask you before, you know, when you guys you're still single and you know, just, being flirtatious and everything. What was something memorable about, uh, about you know, your life? You know, whether it's music, whether it's uh, hanging out with family or, you know, things that actually made, you know, kind of like contributed to who you are as a person. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's so many, you know, it's like, there's so many good memories that we hold on to. It's just, there's so many different types of it. It's like, personally, it was just like me being able to afford to buy a ticket by myself so I could fly home. For holidays. Like that was a very defining experience for me where I didn't have to ask my parents to help me out with, with my life and those kinds of expenses. Like that was to me, becoming an adult and i was very proud to be able to do that what about you lindsay anything stick out like you know when when you were in school you know yeah well um when i went to sorry when i went to depaul university i i feel like i really found my people <laughs> and Aww. still to this day um my my closest friends are those people that were in the program with me at DePaul University. And um, I just love them so much. And even though we're spread out all over the place and we hardly ever see each other, uh, they were my rock during, you know, the, starting out with uh, singing and trying to make a career doing something yeah. and we're all poor and, <laughs> and don't know what we're doing and they were just they were amazing and and you know i i feel like i became the person i am now thanks to all of them oh that that's true i mean it, it really uh, it develops us as as not just singers but as as human beings you know to actually grow more we grow more as human beings when we meet the people we we meet in school and also in in music. So yeah, now, yeah. question: You you I, I um who's that? Um, Irina said that earlier how they met. Uh, just briefly, how did you guys meet? Uh, which we already know. And what was your first impression of? I thought of your Lucas life? was like a stagehand uh, or like because he came in the rehearsal a week late and I was pretty pissed off because I had to do another music rehearsal because he showed up late. Whether he had a good excuse or not, I didn't care, but he was wearing sweats and like a Carhartt hat. And I was like, this guy's coming here to deliver some set pieces or to like take down the floor or something, yeah? Because I was too busy to look up who was the Figaro. And, and he came in and he didn't say who he was to me. He just started showing me fishing pictures on his phone. Uh -huh and told me this is what he's been doing the past week. And I was like, wait, like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, I'm here, like having to do this extra rehearsal when I'm being overworked by the whole company and now you're coming, like, 
it didn't go well. But then he started to sing. I was like, and I geeked out right away. It's like, oh, I need to ask him how he does it. Ah, so I was like, that's what I need to figure out. <laughs> High notes. And I just geeked out. And I went up to him to be like, can I talk to you about how well you sing? But he already started planning like the outing that everybody was going to take right after that. So he he started saying, so we're going to go to Psycho Susie's for drinks. And then we're going to go to this bar of Grumpy's right after that. And then we're going to go to Gay 90s. And he just started planning. And um, wow. and then we went to a restaurant. And he started pulling out chairs to make sure everybody who was at the table had chairs. And in that moment, I thought, whoever's going to be with this man is going to be a very lucky woman. Oh, that was like one of my, favorites. and I was, wait, no, I'm sorry. I get carried away. <laughs> so what about you, Lindsay? So what was, what was your first impression? Like, I not understand what the singing, but how, how did you guys meet? I want to know like the de deets. Tell us the deets. <laughs> um, well, Sam was always hanging out in the um, rehearsal office at Lyric Opera which is right at the stage door. You come in the stage door and there's a big window there and, you know. Um, and so the, the chorus had to come in and we all had to sign in every time we yeah. came in on the bulletin boards right across from there. And so, you know, we'd do that and he'd say hi and how's everybody doing, blah, blah, blah. You know, the usual Sam Raimi being nice to everybody and we're all like, oh, Mr. Raimi. And, um, you know, and I, I'd seen him working on stage over, you know, the years. And uh, I always admired how he looked in his blue jeans. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he was, and I mean, obviously I admired the way he sang, how he mm. performed. And uh, so we signed in and he came over and talked to me and my friend Tricia and, uh, then I got a phone call from him. Um, well, a, a phone message on my answering machine, you know, back in the day when everybody had an answering machine, no cell phones or anything yet. It is the and, equivalent of a Walkman, just to, for people who have iPod. iPod. <laughs> it's the equivalent of a Walkman. <laughs> and um, he, he was separated at the time. He had been married for a long time. And yeah. so, he called and left a message and he looked me up in the phone book. Oh my God. <laughs> I used to do that, Lindsay. I used to do that too. <laughs> Marina never had to do that. See, I know she's too young. Oh. I, I looked up pizza delivery play. I okay. It's we look up yellow pages. Oh my God. Yellow pages, yeah. Looking up people's last name and trying to make sure that it's the right first name and the middle initial as well, because that makes a difference. Anyway, go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah. So I think I was the only Lindsay Larson actually in Chicago. Wow. So he uh, looked me up and he left a message and, you know, hello, I'm Sam Raimi. I hope I have the right person. And at first I thought, all right, who is playing a prank on me? <laughs> and then I thought, wait a minute, nobody can sound like Sam Raimi. <laughs> That's true. I know. Yeah. And so when I went to the next time I had to go into the opera house and he was there, you know, he said hi and everything and I didn't know what to say. And so he kind of waited until I was by myself and he said, did you get my message? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and so, you know, we started going out. That's when it started. Oh, that's, that's awesome. When it that's, started. Awesome. that's awesome. Now, uh, wait, we're going to look at some, some, um, some, um, uh, moments here. Michael May says, wait, I thought I was the only one with that headgear. Fire stylist. Thank you. And then my friend Sierra, this is awesome. And then Sierra also says, I love Sam. It's like, oh, and then Thomas already said, love you all. Have a wonderful day. Fine, leave, whatever. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now we go to a little on the, on the serious side, but you know, more informative side. After you met each other's husbands and you started hanging out and then later on you just you know fast forward you started traveling with them you know because when they're they they have you you want to be with each other and that i can understand this especially with long-term relations long long distance relationships it, not not a lot of them really 
pan out well. So to be able to be with them the whole time, meaning you have to sacrifice time off from your normal routines to be with them. So what was there anything you felt you gave up? Like, you know, that you think is not necessarily a bad thing, but but just an acknowledgement of something that you gave up. Irina. I I think um in the time when I had to make the decision, I thought I was giving up something. And I kept thinking about it for years. And I kept thinking, did I make a right decision? Because I stopped, I canceled all of my contracts for young artist positions and staff pianist positions at small companies, level C companies in the US. I had nothing in Europe. And I kept wondering like, what would have happened if I would have gone down that road? And now um, we're married for four and a half years now. And I now I can definitively say like, I, I don't feel like I gave up as much. Mm. Just, that, just that uncertainty is, is what was in my mind. But I feel like that's completely gone because I really defined, being with him has allowed me to define my art how I oh, want. Yes. Yeah. So um, no, it's, that's really a good point because you know feeling something that feeling something is different from later on knowing realizing, oh, I only felt that way, but that doesn't mean that that's what really what really what I yeah what was going on. So uh, and then what about you, Lindsay? I gave up singing, and I had been pursuing it all my life. I'd always wanted to be a singer, so. The choice was stay where I was and see Sam, you know, for a couple days every few months mm -hmm. um, or stop what I was doing and travel with him. And it, it wasn't a hard decision because I knew I wanted to be with him and I knew I would have amazing experiences that otherwise I wouldn't have. And I really didn't want to be away from him, but um, it sort of felt like a a little death almost, oh. <laughs> giving up my dream of yeah. wanting to be a singer. But um, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I felt too like there was a, a grieving period. Yeah, like yeah. I, I had suffered a loss, and yeah, it took a few years to get over that because it's like you you nourished this dream for so long, so long. all of a sudden that stopped and it was i i didn't yeah know. you know i i can i can see that you know i when when lindsay said that you know it's it's i'm just glad that when you traveled with your husband it's like you know especially with lindsay because you're a singer is like oh i may not be doing that but then you're surrounded by all these wonderful singers kind of like it in Oh, even though even though your 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 gut you know your your goal was was to be a singer, but then your spirit and soul is suddenly in you know like surrounded by all this beautiful singing. You feel like oh, I'm part of that world, even though I'm not physically doing it. And that's how I've always you know felt. And sometimes that's how Stephen feels. He's not a singer, but when he's with us, he feels like one of us, and that's. You know, and there's acceptance and there's always like, you know, you're part of a group. We were talking about it with my guest, Lauren, about two days ago. You're part of the tribe. Once you're in, you're part of the tribe. You are family. So next yeah. one is, next question. <laughs> we talked about this earlier. If you weren't a musician and are still single, not necessarily single meaning you're not dating. You're just like, oh, I'm just, uh, just by myself. You know, what would you have done with your life? Like. What was something else besides music that you were interested in? Uh, Lynn, I, yeah, Irina. I always had this like dream in the back of my mind that I wanted to do like marketing because uh, I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to use that I never got to use. And um, and so like when, when I met Lucas, um, social media really started uh, started like a new movement for classical musicians. So I, I started putting all of my ideas into motion through Lucas. 
and he was willing to do anything. <laughs> so he, he put up with all of my ideas and I, I mean, I think he really started to see the benefit of it. And, um, and I still get to do that today. And now I'm really into like video editing. So we make videos together and, um, and then I, I've, yeah, I've learned like new software and new social media things. So, so basically like when, so basically what you're saying is, you know, even though you're not, you know, you're not, uh, uh, even though you're, you know, you're married still, what your plan before is now surfacing what now that you know you're married and then traveling oh my god i get to do this so so yeah. that's kind of cool it's kind of like oh it's 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 not really far away from what you have would have done yes yeah and, oh. and i didn't feel comfortable for the first uh, year or two of having been with lucas because i felt i had like a little bit of that fraud uh, syndrome where i thought mm -hmm. oh i'm only getting these opportunities i wouldn't even perform with him for the first two years because I said, no, that's me taking the opportunity of a pianist who actually deserves to be there. And I'm just his wife oh, and yeah. I wouldn't do it. And, and then he like really needed a pianist. And he's like, why should I hire somebody when you're capable of doing it? And it was a real like identity crisis that I went through. I get that. Yeah. That, and I, now I'm yeah. like, well, I, I guess I'm good enough as the next one. So, exactly. you know, you know, and, and, you know, when, when you're, uh, when you're, you, when you're, um, when you're surrounded, like I said, when you're surrounded by other singers and stuff, you do learn. I mean, I remember when Steven, when Steven and I met, he didn't really have an ear for what, what intonation was. And it is so funny now. Every time we would watch The Voice or American Idol or, or, or everywhere, he, he picks it up the same time or even before I do. When they're flat, it's like, oh, flat. It's like, oh, I love it <laughs> because he's been surrounded by all these really accomplished musicians. <laughs> his ear, without singing, without playing, his ear is now trained to know what flat and sharps are. What about you, Lindsay? Um, so what would you have done? Mm, exciting. You know, if you would have asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said, I can't possibly think of anything else I would have done. <laughs> but now that now that I'm older, <laughs> I don't know. I think being an interior designer or something like that would be interesting. Your art is gorgeous in the back. Oh, thank you. I didn't do it. We just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> nice selection. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's cool. It's cool. Now, another question, another hard-hitting question is... How do you remain independent as an individual and as a woman? Now, this is specifically, this, this question is targeted towards being with, uh, with Lucas and being with Sam. Uh, every time you travel, uh, people know you as the artist's wife. Um, whether, you know, you go to donors fun functions, you go to dinners, you go to after parties, you go to cast parties, especially the, oh, especially those luncheon dinners. Oh my God. When you have to like, when was the first time you sang? You know, you know, they get that question. They get, no, no, they ask those questions to your husbands, but then every once in a while, I would only guess, do you, you know, you probably would guess, so how how often do you travel with him? It's always they always ask about him. Now, how do you so how do you remain independent? And I think I have another uh, I have a question that I didn't type up is how do you how do you keep the conversation so that they they're next to you? They should be at, you know how do you do that? So let's start now with Lindsay. Oh no, <laughs> I am horrible at making small talk. And so um, a lot of these all, I was overwhelmed initially uh, when I first started traveling with Sam and I'd sort of, you know, hide in a corner during receptions and, you know, <laughs> and so many times you're not seated with your spouse at these um, dinners or luncheons or whatever. And, and I'm a shy person, you know, when I'm around people I don't know. and. Uh, it was just excruciating. And I was actually more than happy to just talk about Sam at that point. <laughs> I did not want to, you know, anything that came to mind, I was more than happy to talk about. I'm I, So I, I didn't have a different identity, basically, for quite what a while. What about now? 
What about now? Well, I learned that Sam is a rather quiet person. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes I had to jump in and fill the silence. <laughs> oh. So I almost feel like I became an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes because you know he'd you know give you sort of these yes and no answers and you could tell that you know they wanted more and so that was sort of my job you know saying well you know sam you blah 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 or whatever and um yeah that was oh, i felt like that was my job we got a comment from clark here clark evans i talked with you and your son at length in dallas oh that was recent yeah that, no. was, that was just like a year ago so yeah. Um, well, see, then I had my son, and it was all about him. So <laughs> I was, I was mommy. <laughs> I think, I think at some point, I think Irina will eventually be doing that as well. <laughs> it's like we'll be talking about his, his son as well. What about you, Irina? It's like, so, um, it's like, yeah, the same questions. Like, you know, how do you? Yeah. Well, uh, it's so funny you say that. Sam is like so shy with that stuff. Um, because Lucas is like, like you said, like so grounded and he is very generous in terms of making other people feel comfortable. So when I go to these functions, Lucas is, it, it's weird because he's in work mode where he knows he has to network and everybody's there to learn, uh, to meet somebody new, to network, but he does it so naturally. So he goes off and I don't see him for a while. <laughs> And I'm like sitting there by myself, but I've learned to like find somebody else who's in the same situation as me and just go to them and have like a real conversation. And, and then Lucas will come back to me like every like 20, 30 minutes and be like, okay, here's my drink. Um, this is what I want for food. I'm going to go back out. And I'm like, okay, go have a good time. And, so, uh, now, development. so now we go to a part where before, before we do our, you know, we're going to play a game with these two ladies right here, but before we do, I'd like to show some uh, nice, um, um, some pictures here. Oh, look at me. I'm big. Um, <laughs> the first <laughs> one is we're going to show some blast from the past and there's Lindsay right there. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to go with, and there's Irina. I'm going to stop my cam so that they don't see us. And then this is now a picture of side-by-side -side photos of uh, when they got married. I was actually, unfortunately, I was not there when Sam and Lindsay got married. However, I was there <laughs> when uh, Irina and Lucas got married. So that's their wedding photo. Uptown then, Funk was the best moment of the <laughs> Oh, look, uh, we're being interrupted. Lindsay, uh, who is this Samuel Ramey right here? When I lived in New York, I lived in the same building in which Trizen owned an apartment. Oh, because of because of um, Clark's question earlier, oh. he was with Streisand. Thanks, Sam, for chiming in. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Look, uh, Sierra Lambert, what about politics? Because he posts the best stuff. You know what? We're not talking about Sam here. That's the whole point about this show. Right, ladies? <laughs> We're not talking about Sam and his political comments on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now this is oh, the wonder of life. This is Lindsay. Oh. When, okay. I, I, I only see the name, but how do you pronounce your son's name? It's Samuel Guy Ramey, and for the first six years of his life, we called him Guy. Um, and then he decided in first grade that he was going to be Sam. Okay. So we had to switch, and I still call him Guy, and he gets mad at me. I love the name Guy. I well, I, 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 had, I had to ask because I thought it was Guy, like, like you know, like. It's not the French. Nope. And it, actually, that was um, Sam's father's name, Guy Ramey. Oh, nice. And then this. Oh, look at that little baby. And that is Cash. That is their son, Cash. That's Lucas and Irina. Oh, so cute. And then another, some more photos. Oh, so where was this? I thought this was Halloween, but I realized this is Mephistopheles. <laughs> well, it was around Halloween. Um, and that's why Guy had oh. that outfit. But Sam was doing Faust at Lyric Opera. And so we put Guy in his little Halloween costume and, and went backstage and someone took a picture. <laughs>
That's awesome. That's awesome. Now this is the now this one is a uh, also Halloween. Now this one, what is what is the costume here, Irina? Man in the yellow hat with yeah. Curious George, and I decided to be a monkey too. Oh, and then this is a little fast forward when they're growing up. That the monkey costume that Cash was wearing was so slippery because it was like a very silky material for the fur. And I remember holding him and my costume was also silky. And he was, <laughs> I remember like having a tough time holding him in that. It was so funny. And this is, now this is the, the, as time goes by a little bit, you know. And bit. I have to give a shout out to Beth Bergman, the photographer, Beth Bergman. She came over to the apartment we were staying in in New York and she took the, this picture for us. So what is this, uh, what, what are they, what is he holding? Is this a, uh, what kind you of- You know, toy? it's some little toy and she brought it because she knew that he'd probably need something to keep himself occupied during a photo shoot. So yeah, it's, it's like a little, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know, a little and toy. Then, and then this is another uh, costume one. Oh my God, this, Irina, I know who these okay. characters are. We saw Eurovision. Yeah, you're, you're, okay, yes. I so loved it. Eurovision oh. Fire Saga. The and what was this last year or yeah. two years ago? Last this year. This year. And then now they're all grown up now. And this is Sam and Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in case Sam is you know watching, we call him <laughs> Sam. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> so and then then there's now, I want to know, when did you guys take this picture? We just took that picture um, in October. We drove to South Dakota for a long weekend to see my parents, and it was cold, and they live on a lake. And um, I figured it was our only chance to get a picture of the three of us together, so my brother-in-law took the picture. I know, this is like, I always have photo Allah, and then this is them. Oh, look at that. Any 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 weird stories? Like, was it hard to get him to to that uh, pose? He was a little model that whole shoot. I mean, oh he was wow, like, like over the shoulder kind of. <laughs> and I was like, what? That's awesome. Perfect. Now, you know, um, let me let me put my camera here for a second. So, the Real Housewives won't be Real Housewives un un unless we see some fashion. And then I decided to put together a side by side of, uh, and they're gonna tell us exactly, exactly uh, where they wore this. Okay, and there they are. Tell us first of all, Lindsay, what are you wearing, and where <laughs> did you wear this? <laughs> That is uh, my favorite evening gown. It's a Naeem Khan evening gown. And mm -hmm. actually in that picture, it was the opening for the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Ah, wow. But and I also, I've worn it more than once. I also wore it to the Met for, I think it was New Year's. It's like New a, Year's thing. For me, it looks like, like a golden mermaid. That's what it looks like to me. It's, it's metal like sequins. It's a very heavy dress. What about you, Irina? Tell us where this is. This is at the Grammys. Yes. A number of 2017. And this is by an Egyptian designer. Her name is Temraza. And um, I remember this moment. Um, it was right after. So we did the red carpet, which was like my favorite moment ever because I like... I like award shows. I like uh, Oscars and Golden Globes and Emmys. And I finally was like living my dream. And uh, and Adele was two people in front of us. And then, yeah. and then the person in front of us was Camilla Cabello, who's now wow. really famous. But at that time, we didn't know who she was. Um, and I remember walking down and there was Kris Jenner there. And she wow. looked at me for 10 whole seconds. And I thought I had won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't like everything Chris Jenner does, but she is right. amazing I mean, and still. she accomplished a lot of things. So the fact that she looked at me for 10 seconds, I was just so happy. And then Lucas won that night. And so it was even, even nicer. So now um, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of just, you know, mother and 
son right here. Aww. There's Lindsay and Sam. Where is this? That's in Madrid. Look at this. Oh, and then this is, oh, and this is Irina and Cash. And where was this? Galveston in Texas. Galveston in Texas. Now I'm going to show you a little montage of Lindsay. This is Lindsay. So, Lindsay, you got to tell us exactly what these four are. Okay, starting on the left, um, that was from a production. These are all at Lyric Opera uh, yeah. in Chicago. Um, it was Romeo and Juliet. And then the second one over, as you can probably guess, was from Mephistophele. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one, no one would guess. Um, <laughs> it's from Die Meisterzinger. I have no idea why I was wearing a gigantic eye on my head. It, and uh, the last one um, is one of my costumes from Nabucco in Chicago. And uh, actually that's uh, the opera where Sam and I really started getting to, you know, talking a lot and getting to know each other. So that was kind of, I'll always remember that. <laughs> and now I have, <laughs> I did, <laughs> I did a couple of things. This is a tribute to, um, this is a video. Irina doesn't know I did this. <laughs> it's a short clip and I hope you guys like it. You're now live. Live. Come say hey to everyone over here and hey to everyone. Three, two, one. Hello. Hi. Are we live here as well? We got four cameras. Oh my gosh, we're breaking the internet. I hope Hi, not because everyone's at home right Instagram. now on the internet. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining us. We're going to give everyone a second to sort of come on in and uh, rest and relax. Oh, I'm busy. Sing it, baby. Anyway, oh. <laughs> I thought that was fun. It's like, you know what? It took me like, oh, how do I edit this thing? And so just a second. It's like, there you go. So that we, they can see it. And now we come to our portion where we, I have asked our guests that they're going to play a game. Lindsay, oh, wait, Lindsay. Lindsay, I'm wondering if you could do a recital, what cycle would you do? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I haven't thought about that for a long time. Probably something, something uh, German leader, Strauss, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure of the, it's kind of hard to find women's song cycles. Um, do you have any input, uh, uh, Irina, about like, what do you think is uh, a good uh, female I, I I have such fond memories of foray for low ah, I love foray. Yeah, I I miss that. <laughs> yeah. So now we go to our game called him army. All right, and then we're gonna do this. I wish I could just like take me off of this one. Just a second. Oh yeah, let me see. Are you still there, Robo? <laughs> you guys can hear me, right? Now I can. Okay, good, 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 good. Because I don't want to see myself because then the, the game would be this. So him or me. So uh, show your paddles. Ah, paddles. There you go. Lucas and then him or me. I'm going to mention... Uh, some terms here, and then they're going to tell me if it's them or their husbands. First of all, who, how do I ask this question? Who is better at changing diapers? <laughs> Both of them like that. <laughs> That's a tie. That's a tie? Okay, but, okay, question. Who 
changes the diapers more. When I think that was a tie for me too. Really? Sam was really good at that. Oh wow, wow. Okay, now this one. Who is better at apologies? Who apologizes first every time you have a fight? <laughs> what? Oh my <laughs> God, Sam! You got to talk. <laughs> okay, the next one is who's bossier? <laughs> oh my God, Lindsay! Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I see. Mm -hmm. I am woman. <laughs> oh, who has a better temperament? Oh, sorry. Oh, that's good. Two more, two more. Who is more nervous on opening night? <gasps> Are, really? Oh, Guy? Yeah, like I, my heart starts pounding. I think... Before really? he sings, I think I he lost his voice. Does he? Really <laughs> Are you kidding me? Both of you? I do that too. Yeah. And the moment he starts to sing, I relax. Then you're like, fine. Yeah. Except, do you know all of the, you know all of the I little problem areas? Oh, so every time kidding. they come up, you're like. <laughs> so wait. So 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 basically, when you guys when when you guys before before they sing. You since you they already always practice it and that you always hear it, it's like subconscious. It's like it becomes like when you go to the to the to the performances. It's not like you listen to it, you know, uh, attentively when you're at home. But then it becomes apparent that oh my god, I did listen to it attentively. So that's hap That's what happens. And then you're like, oh, is he is he gonna hit the note? Is he gonna really? Huh? Oh my god. My my husband my husband wears an earphone every time I sing. Well, every time I talk too, but you know that's a <laughs> different thing. Oh, and then I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Wait, do we have a comment here? This is funny. It's like, oh, Irina, you look gorgeous even at 1 a.m. Oh, <laughs> mom, that's the mom. In case Lindsay's wondering, it's like, who is that? Now, this is a question I want to know. What name did your kid say first? And by name, I mean, was it your mom? Like, if he says mommy or daddy, which one? Oh, oh he still doesn't say mama yet. Yeah. So, so what? Did, what does Cash say? What did Cash say? Dad, 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 dad. And, and what about and what about you, Lindsay? What did he say? I'm pretty sure he said mama first, but. Sam may argue with me about that one. <laughs> oh, well, guys, thank you. First of all, yeah, thank you for playing and thank you for joining me tonight. Guys, these two are like my first more than one person guests, <laughs> Irina and Lindsay. And thank you for doing this, especially it's late at night and... You know, it's like with at least with with Lindsay, it's like you know, I know you you don't stay up this late too, even though your son is already like grown up. But you know, for Arena also, it's like still a baby. Well, toddler is it toddler? Is it considered toddler? Yeah, it's a toddler, but Lucas is doing the morning shift. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, good man! <laughs> oh, look at that! It's like Sam said, I may. What was the last thing I said? May, I may. Oh, um, he probably thinks that he said. Oh, dad, dad out before mama. Is before I see, I see. So now I want to. Uh, uh, I, by the way, guys, I worked at 7 Eleven today, so some of the so captions are not ready, but I'm typing it right now. I have a new segment, I mean, the new part of the show, the last part of the show called the Wow Moment, and it stands for words of wisdom. I like to, um, or whatever it is, whether it's music, whether it's about life, whether it's about about being a woman, uh, being uh, being an independent woman, being uh, uh, someone who knows that keeps their identity. Like, if you want to share your words of wisdom to our uh, um, our viewers, let's start with Irina. Well, whether you're a musician or not, finding somebody who supports you and who is generous enough to listen to what your dreams are, you deserve to have a partner who, who champions you and the And now Lindsay. Well, that was so good. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I would say, because now I'm in my 50s, I'm at a point where I think, you know, things that I used to really worry about, you know, what, how are, how will I be perceived? You know, yeah. what will these people think of me? All the things that, you know, go through your head every time you have to meet somebody or perform or whatever, you know, you get to a point where you just think, just who cares? Just do your thing, um, focus on your talent, whatever it is, and don't worry about what other people think. You know, just enjoy who you are, embrace who you are. Thank you, guys. Thank you for Thank you. I love it so much. You guys are so fun. You're fun. I know that. <laughs> I really know that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in the in in the backstage while I say goodbye to everyone. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Now, <clears throat> so um, thank you again for. What's the last one? Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you for everyone who watched the show. Uh, there's going to be more shows where I have more than one guest. And and it's always fun because, you know, it's, you know time goes by fast. <clears throat> and um, my my new th there's a theme song for my show that's coming up based on how I always uh, start my show. So watch out for that. Hopefully after the New Year's, <clears throat> I'd like to sing that again <clears throat> i always uh end the song with uh, end the show with a high note again follow me on twitter facebook youtube and everything again thank you again and <clears throat> you're watching it's raw raw after midnight